Yeah, I was and gentlemen, my name is Coco Carl 34 and today with another episode of Prehistoric Subject Files, and today we're going to do Aegeosuchus. Uh, now, Aegeosuchus Witsumerii is a, well, a gyptosuchid, and it was named in 2012 by paleontologists Casey Holiday and Nicholas Gardiner. Now, when they found it, they actually nicknamed it the um, Shield Croc. And that's because of, well, if you see in the image here, it's um, it's a funny looking skull on a crocodile. It's a very flat, it's a very um, pancake-like croc kind of like skull. And, well, um, this particular croc, it, it was huge, um, but I'll get into that later. Um, now, it, was a, it lived around 95 million years ago in the Sonomian period, uh, which was in the early Cretaceous period. And it's only known from a specimen, a holotype specimen known as... ROM 54530, which is a partial uh, brain case and skull roof. Now, the distinguishing characteristics of Aegisuchus Wittema um, are described as having a raised and rough surfaced uh, boss on the parietal bone. Um, on either side of the bosses are holes called dosotemporal fenestrae, and they have smooth surrounding areas. It has a rectangular projections on the quadrate bone that are basically a ducta uh, tubercle, which basically are for gigantic uh, muscle muscles. Basically, it attaches the muscles to the actual uh, skull. Now, the projections on a lateral sphenoid bone are called the capu capitate processes on the side of the face, and basically, this this croc had huge huge muscles on the side of his face, and I'll get into the reason why. Um, now, the back of the skull was actually quite wide, and it had projections of something called the exocytopelia uh, bones, or exocyptilla uh, bones, I don't know yet. I don't really know. Um, and these were for the large expatial uh, mu uh, muscles that basically they attach to the skull as well so this this croc had huge skull uh, huge skull muscles um, and I'll get into the reasons why but the skull is very distinguishable from all these characteristics pretty much as you can see on here now there's been several calculations of the actual size of the animal now the skull alone has been estimated to be 2.08 to 2.886 meters or 6.8 to 9.4 feet um, feet basically in length and from this they've actually ranged the sizes quite variably um, now the first set of um, sizes were ranged and based on uh, Garia or otherwise known as Galvillus uh, gan gangetis, uh, gangetus um, and basically the first proportions were actually estimated around 15 to 21 meters or 49 to 69 feet which is a bit big for a crocodile um, considering the skull and the look of the actual brain case um, I would have said no first firstly um, now the second lot of estimates I actually put it as a bit bigger some of them actually and they, they were based on shorts and outed crocodilians it's not specific to which species but I'd imagine it'd be the slender uh, snout crocodiles now and the second proportions put it at 16 to 22 meters or 52 to 72 meters which is again big which is just insane uh, but the third uh, estimates put it around 8 to 10 meters which in my opinion is more of a reasonable estimate now the cool thing about the actual material that they actually have of this crocodile is that it actually shows that it may have actually had the ability to thermoregulate or basically control its temperature because of the uh, rugous and rough um, areas on the bosses of the skull. Now this may have actually had complex thick skin on top of the rough regions of the skull and basically what it actually could do was give it the ability to actually send hot or warm blood to the eyes and to the brain so then it was like extra active you know, when it needed to be. Now, the thing about Aegisuchus is that it was actually a predator that actually ambushed from the from basically the surface, where it had its, its jaws above the surface, not underneath, because the actual skull would actually create drag and slow it down. Now, the adductor mandibular um, externus medialis uh, muscles, which are just huge <laughs> in this crocodile, were actually a lot stronger than other crocs proportionally because, well... I'll get to other reasons why, but also additionally, there's a broad-surfaced um, 
Pilia um, region, which basically allows for the attachment of a muscle known as the spanulus, well, spen sorry, spenulus captius. Uh, basically, that that basically attaches uh, to the neck, I believe, or from the neck. I can't exactly remember which one. Uh, but basically, these huge neck muscles actually allowed for this animal to actually lift its head out of the water with actually great power. So they actually, it was actually specialized for attacking from the surface, not from like below the surface. So it may have been like hunting a lot of things. Now, I think it, it basically it would have hunted stuff like fish, snakes, uh, varanid lizards, a few pterosaurs, not many dinosaurs to be honest, but it was also uh, big on preying on small, smaller reptiles, uh, coelacanths, lungfish, uh, bitcheries, and also, well, just whatever it could get its jaws upon. And basically, it also is supported by the fact that from other species of crocodilian that are related to it, it actually had flexible uh, neck vertebrae, which meant it could lift its head quite quickly out of the water. Now the closest, uh, the closest relative at the time of Aegisuchus was actually Aegyptosuchus perii, which was um, a slightly smaller crocodilian, but uh, all the same was very large and uh, shared a lot of the characteristics. But it wasn't as bulky; it was actually a lot more slender than its close uh, relatives. So maybe these two may have actually uh, came from a similar ancestor, or maybe Aegisuchus may have evolved from Aegyptosuchus, which could be a possibility. Now, potentially, Aegisuchus may have actually fallen victim to Spinosaurus, as it may have been actually preyed upon by Spinosaurus, because it was actually small enough to be preyed upon by Spinosaurus if it could have. Um, and that's the reason. Uh, the reason is because it lived in the oceans or near the coastline of the Tethys Ocean, which was near the northern parts of Africa in the Kemkem -Kem, uh, Beds Formation, which is where it's found. Now, it could have also it could have also potentially fought Spinosaurus, but you never know. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed this episode, I uh, hope this, uh, basically, this new crocodilian species got you enthralled in crocodilians, because this is a really weird but really cool uh, crocodilian in my opinion. So, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I shall see you later. Bye bye.